G'day guys, welcome to Smith City's Cooking Adventures. This is cooking show number five, I do believe. And what are we cooking today? I haven't eaten much today. I've just had an egg and bacon roll and that's pretty much all I've had with two coffees. That's all I've had, which is not a lot of food in anyone's um, food eating for the day. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook, and I haven't done this in a very long time, but it's a steak sandwich that I like to cook. And so what you're going to need is some halloumi. And I'll show you how, how I make that really nice in the pan. Um, I only could get what I could get at Woolworths at a very late on a Sunday evening. There wasn't a lot going, so I got scotch fillet steak. Uh, I'll just be using one of them. Cooking at medium rare. Cook it however you like, but don't cook it to a cinder, please. Um, or you may as well just eat leather. Uh, we've got gourmet glaze, balsamic vinegar glaze. Very important stuff, that. Because you're going to put it on some chopped up red onion and fry that off in the pan. A bouquet of lettuce. If you want to have a bit of fun, guys, go go to the shops and come back to your missus and go, I've got you a bunch of flowers. <laughs> Maybe don't do that unless you want to die. Um, and some crusty bread. You can get any crusty bread you like. Um, this has got quite a hard exterior, but it, I know it's soft on the inside. So this is white panne de casa. Probably pronounced that really wrong. But a new addition. I've never had this on, on here before and it might clash. I did try it before. It might clash with the balsamic, but green tomato pickle. I have had it. Um, I might go sparingly on that because I think that'll I think that and and that with the red onion will be very similar in acidity. And obviously you don't want the balance to be out with the dish. So let's get cooking. All right, so what I like to do with my steak before I put it in the pan is I give it a little bit of a dash of olive oil, some salt, and some pepper. All right, and then I flip it over, repeat the same process, give it a little bit of oil drizzle. And that's it. So we'll come over to the stove. So I've just put the uh, the pan on full heat. I'm just going to let that heat up. Now we're just going to put the steak in the pan. Listen to that sizzle. Now you can do your steak a number of ways cooking. I tend to just let it cook on one side and then I flip it over and cook it on the other side. Not always checking it, just sort of understanding like if you've cooked steak before, you kind of know what your preferences are in terms of how you like to cook it. And so I'll probably put this on for maybe two minutes on this side, not really moving it. And then I'll flip it on the other side for two minutes and I'll see if I think I need to Flip it on its side to render some of the fat down, make it nice and crispy and delicious. And uh, I'll let you know when that happens. All right, we're gonna flip it over now. We'll wait another couple of minutes. And then we'll have to flip it on its side. I don't think we need to crisp up the uh, sides, so I'm just gonna flip it over one more time. And we're almost there. So I flipped it over again. The reason why I've done that with this steak is it's a bit thinner. And so I didn't want to do it my normal way because I felt like I would probably burn the exterior of the steak. Um, so I've flipped it two times on both sides, if that makes sense. So I've basically flipped it four times.
and I reckon there we're good to go. So come over back to the chopping board. So I'm going to let that rest and I'm going to do the other stuff now. So we'll come over here. So we'll go onto the red onion now. What I like to do is just cut it down the middle before I even try to take the skin off, off it. And generally doing that, the skin will then just come off naturally. Now that there's a little bit of breakage through cutting it. So we're only going to use half, half is plenty. And what I like to do is I just like to cut strips. I'm not the best knife cutter so pers uh, professional chefs don't come at me in the comment section. I'm cutting with a very blunt knife. If I'm scaring you that I'm going to cut my finger, so am I. <laughs> uh, we might just turf that. Uh, see if I can cut that woody bit off. There we go. Alright, so what we do now is, I'm going to already have in the cupboard. Going to go balsamic vinegar. Pour a little bit of that in there. I then put my red onions into that. Might get rid of some of those scrappy scraps. Then I go in with, which I probably should have opened before I hit the record button. So now you can watch me butcher opening this up. And then I go in with this glaze. All right, might seem like a lot. Give it a bit of a mix with your hands if you want to, that way you can break apart the onions. Hands are washed. And then we'll bring that over to the pan. So we're just gonna go in here with the onions and the balsamic glaze as well as the balsamic vinegar. It's got a little bit there that won't come off. And we'll move that around. I've got that on a high heat, but you might want to turn it down a fraction during the cooking process so you don't burn that glaze. And we'll come over and we'll cut up the steak because I want the steak to stop cooking now. Alright, so the balsamic stuff's cooking in the background there. I put it on a low heat so I don't burn it. And I'm just going to see, I've run out of room and I don't, didn't want to wipe down that board again because then I'd have to wipe it down again for the halloumi. So this is wanting to move around on me. It's not as rare as I would have liked it, but it's close enough. Um, I probably cooked it a little bit too longer than what I normally like, but um, no, that's pretty good. As it goes, as it gets thicker, it'll start to be a little bit more blush in the middle. Now, I know you're probably supposed to be cutting this a certain way, like with the grain or against the grain. So there's probably people will be like, oh my God, he's bushing that steak. But at the end of the day, it all turns into poo in the end. Anyway, I better check on that onions. So there's the red onions. I'll put them back in the same thing as the glaze and also the balsamic vinegar. It doesn't hurt it. And it just means that you save on a dish. So now onto the halloumi. So we're using this type of halloumi. And we're just going to open it up. If you've never worked with halloumi before, there is some liquid um, in this. And I'm just trying to find where the opening part of this packet is. I just went a bit bogan and opened it with a knife on the side and I'm going to pull it, pull it out and I'm not too sure if you can see that there's obviously some liquid there alright and this is you can see how it's glistening there 
what we want to do is we want to take all the moisture out the wetness out of it so when you put it in the pan it doesn't stew because you want it to fry up and get nice and crispy some people do um, put flour over it but honestly I don't think you need it as long as you just pat pat it dry and make it really really dry and then if you do put it in the pan and it starts to sort of leak out a little bit more liquid just go with another bit of paper towel and dab it so you get, you get rid of that little bit of pool of liquid and they should fry up quite nicely so bad boy or girl so well, I'll basically show you. There's no point stopping it and starting it again. Not too worried about the onion knife because at the end of the day, there's going to be onion on the uh, on the sandwich, so it all all works out in the wash. There, the only difference is it'll probably put a little bit of a, a tinge to the cheese, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I sort of give them roughly the same sort of treatment in terms of size. There might be one or two that sort of are a little bit thinner than others. And we'll head on over to the pan. So I put the halloumi in. The fan isn't on because I thought too much noise would sort of take away from the video. So it is a bit smoky in here. But I put them in. It's, it's a new pan, so I've never cooked halloumi in this pan before. And I did have this handy, but it looks like no real liquid is coming out. So I must have patted it really well. Um... You'll know when it's done. I'm probably only going to use maybe five pieces, so the other ones can just be sort of taste testers, or if you're cooking it for someone else, you could make two sandwiches and this would be enough for two people. Not quite done yet. Cook my pickle. Depending on the size of which you cut, that's kind of why you want them to be the same size because some will and also the placement of where they are in the pan. So the ones that are a bit further away from the element um, are probably going to take longer to fry up. There we go, that's the colour we want. Yeah, there's a fine line between going too far and not enough. Yeah, I reckon we're good. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm just going to put this in a pan up here that's clean just because I don't want them to burn whilst I show you what one of them looks like when you cut through them. It's raining halloumi, hallelujah. It's raining halloumi. Hey, hey. Now it is quite really hot and Oh, I probably do need to let it cool down or else I'm going to burn my fingers, so we'll be back. So this is the halloumi, guys. It's got a nice crispy texture on the outside. And it's a little bit squeaky on the inside. It's a little bit salty. It is one of my favourite cheeses. Let's construct this sandwich. So I've just cut the end off here. And I'm probably going to cut it, I don't know, cut it however big you want it really. Alright, so we'll put that over there for the time being. 
and then just cut it down the middle. Depend on if you like it cut all the way through or with a hinge, totally up to you. And now onto the condiments. So I just got some mayonnaise here. Just going to put that on one side. And now I'm going to go in with the green tomato pickle, which I reckon this is going to be great on sandwiches. Um, like salad cheese sandwiches. I'm just going to apply that there. And now let's construct this beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> I do that far too often. I think I'm going crazy. So pull off a pull off a leaf. Um, just from a like a woody element to it, I like to take out the middle part. I do end up eating that anyway. I just don't think it's necessary in the sandwich itself. So I pull that out. And put that there. So these are cooled down a fair bit, so I'm going to just put them on there like so. You might think that's a lot, and it generally is. Generally, I make make this for two people. All right, and the halloumi should still be a bit warm, so I'm going to put the steak that's now cooled down a bit it's sort of lukewarm uh we might just stay there but look so we'll just have a little testers here if i have leftover steak what i like to do is the leftover halloumi i like to just put them together and eat them by itself so one moment so here's the halloumi again uh, i might go the other way just so i can get more on <laughs> moron that'll do then I'll have these other pieces with this leftover steak so here it is the halloumi steak red uh, balsamic red onion steak sandwich it is a mouthful unhinge your jaw turn into a pelican and let's get it This is always a 10 out of 10 for me. Let me know if you try to cook this and let me know what you think of it. Cheers.